Hi everyone, I'm Patrick from the Assembly AI team and in this video we learn about reinforcement learning. In the previous two videos we already covered supervised and unsupervised learning and now reinforcement learning is the third area in the field of machine learning. So today you will learn about the definition of reinforcement learning, of states, actions and rewards and then we dive into Q-learning and deep Q-learning with neural networks. This area has gotten a lot of popularity in recent years, especially with video games. Games. So maybe you have seen how an AI learns to play snake or chess or the breakout game, but now you're wondering how this works. So the idea behind reinforcement learning is that a so-called software agent will learn from the environment by interacting with it and then receiving rewards for performing actions. And then the agent tries to improve its behavior, so essentially it teaches itself how to get better. This idea is inspired from our natural experiences. Imagine you're a child and you see a fireplace for the first time. You like that it's warm, it's positive, so you get a positive reward. But then you reach out with your hand and try to touch it, and now it's too warm, so it hurts. So you get a negative reward, or a punishment, so to say. But now you might have understood this and learned that fire can be a good thing, but that you should be careful and not get too close. And this is exactly how reinforcement learning works. It's the computational approach of learning from actions in an environment through rewards and punishments. One specific implementation of this approach is the Q-learning algorithm. It's a value-based approach based on a so-called Q-table. The Q-table calculates the maximum expected future reward for each action at each state. And with this information we can then choose the action with the highest reward. Let's look at a concrete example to make this more clear. Let's say we want to teach an AI how to play the snake game. In this game the snake tries to reach and eat the food without hitting the wall or itself. We can list the actions and states in a queue table. The columns will be the four possible actions the snake can do, turning left, right, up and down. And the state can be the current direction, so also left, right, up and down. These are the rows. But of course we can add more states to describe the current situation. For example we can describe the location of the food and add the states food is left of the snake, right, up or down. We could also do the same thing with the walls and describe the danger, but for simplicity I leave this out here. But you see, the more states we add here, the more information we have about the environment, but also the more complex our system will get. Okay, so now we have all rows and columns, and now the value of each cell will be the maximum expected future reward for that given state and action. We call this the Q-value. So far so good. But how do we calculate this Q-value? Here's the interesting part. We do not implement this Q-value calculation in a fixed way. Instead, we improve this Q-table in an iterative approach. This is basically our training or learning process. The Q-learning algorithm works like this. First, we initialize all Q-values, for example with a zero. Then we choose an action A in the current state S. This is based on the current best Q-value. We perform this action and observe the outcome, so we get a new state. We also measure the reward after this action. And then we update Q with an update formula that is called the Bellman equation. And then we repeat steps 2 to 5 until the learning no longer improves and we get a nice Q-table in the end. Now a few questions may appear. First, how can we choose the best action in the beginning when all our values are zero? This is where the exploration versus exploitation trade-off comes into play. In the beginning we choose the action randomly so that our agent can explore the environment. But the more training steps we get, the more we reduce this random exploration and use exploitation instead. So we make use of the information we have. This trade-off is controlled in the calculations by a parameter that is usually called the epsilon parameter. Now the next question is how the rewards are measured. This is actually up to us, so we can come up with a good reward system for the game. In case of the snake game, for example, we can give a reward of 10 points if the snake eats an apple, and a reward of minus 10 points if the snake dies, and zero for every other normal move. 
Now with all these elements, we can inspect the Bellman equation. The idea here is to update our Q value like this. The new Q value is calculated by the current Q value plus a learning rate times a reward plus a discount rate times the highest Q value between possible actions from the new state and then minus the current Q value. The discount rate is a value between 0 and 1 and determines how much the agent cares about rewards in the distant future relative to those in the immediate future. So now we have everything we need and coming back to our iterative learning approach, we can now come up with a good Q table by using this Q learning algorithm. Now deep Q learning takes the Q learning idea and takes it one step further. Instead of using a Q table, we use a neural network that takes a state and approximates the Q values for each action based on that state. And we do this because using a classic Q table is not very scalable. It might work for a simple game, but let's imagine a more complex game with dozens of possible actions and game states. Then the Q table will soon get far too complex and cannot be solved efficiently anymore. So now we use a deep neural network that gets the state as input and produces different Q values for each action. And then again we can choose the action with the highest Q value. The learning process is still the same with this iterative update approach, but instead of updating the Q table, here we update the weights in the neural network so that the outputs get better. And this is how deep Q learning works. If you're interested to see a concrete coding tutorial with deep Q learning, let us know in the comments and then we can try to create a future video about this. All right, I hope I could give you a good introduction to reinforcement learning. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more content like this. Also, if you want to try Assembly AI for free, then grab your free API token using the link in the description below. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.